King Solomon wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes is kind of a different name. It only means the preacher. Solomon set himself forth as the preacher, and he was speaking words of wisdom to his son. So the book of Ecclesiastes is the words of Solomon at the end of his life, telling the young people how to walk in the ways of God. We're going to look tonight a little bit at Proverbs and a little bit at Ecclesiastes, specifically around the issue of marriage. I don't think anything probably more important to every one of us in this room than that room of marriage. So it's very important that we have a high esteem for the marriage relationship. Scripture tells us that Solomon had 300 wives and 700 legal mistresses. So he really had a 1,000 wives. There was a little bit of difference, but not a whole lot. Now, the Scripture told Solomon not to do that. We find that he backs that he fell away from the ways of God. He was handsome. He was the wealthiest man in the world. He was the wisest man. He was a gifted musician. He was a gifted songwriter. He could sing. He was an architect. He was a brilliant man. He was a man that a lot of people would say had it all together. And yet he forsook God in the prime of his life. And at the very end of his life, he returned unto the Lord. He regretted everything that he did in pursuit of happiness outside of the laws of God. He regretted that he ever had a thousand wives. He regretted that he sought a life of pleasure and experience outside of the laws of God. If there was ever a man that experienced everything that could be experienced in terms of pleasure and achievement, it was Solomon. Solomon was the man that had everything, but ultimately had nothing. Ecclesiastes is a little bit of the inner workings of Solomon's heart while he was in search of happiness, while being the wisest man, the most perceptive man that ever lived. And he's discovered everything. He achieved everything. He had everything. He experimented with drugs, with alcohol, with a thousand wines. And yet at the end, he says, it's all vanity. It's all worth nothing outside of obedience to God. Now, praise the Lord that we have his example and we have the power of the Spirit. And we don't have to wait till we're 70 years old to experience all the thrills of life to finally figure out that obedience to God would have been a lot wiser. He grieved over the way he spent his life. In the end, he said, all that I've done will come under the evaluation and the judgment of God. And he says, blessed is the man that walks in the ways of the Lord. And he cursed the days of his youth and of his prime of his life when he didn't heed the ways of the Lord. But you and I don't have to do that because we have his example. We have the word of God in our hearts. We have men and women around us that are pursuing God. I tell you, if you're going to be a man in the way that God meant men to be, You need to be a man that fears the Lord. Because take a man of courage to walk with God. Yet that man will be highly rewarded by the Spirit of the Lord. But it takes a man of courage, a man of wisdom, a man of principle. Any guy can follow the passions of his heart, seek to live them out, and live by the instincts like an animal. But it takes a man, after God's own order, to stand up and say no to sin, to be a man of integrity and honesty, to love his wife, 